2024, and I'd like to call the City Council meeting to order. We'd like to begin by inviting Pastor Cody Edger from Cornerstone Word of Life Church to come forward for the invocation. You all bow your heads and pray with me. Father God, I just thank you for this time that we come together to listen to the issues and the proposals of this time. This time, Father God, I just thank you that you are with the council members as they make tough decisions for this community, that they are led by peace and led in decision makings that will be better for our community and for the people of Madison. I just thank you that as they make these choices, they are not making it out of their own opinions, but really for the best interest of our community. We just thank you that everything that is done here is fruitful. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Sir. Join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, Roll call, please. Mayor Finley? Here. Council Member Robleski? Here. Council Member Spears? Here. Council Member Powell? Here. Council Member Shaw? Here. Council President Bartlett? Here. Council Member Denzine? Here. Council Member Seifert? Here. Are there amend any amendments to the agenda? Uh, we have no amendments. Great. Next, we have approval of minutes number 2024-05-RG. Move to approve. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Ready for a vote. Council Member Shaw? Aye. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council President Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Spears? Sustain. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Council Member Seifert? Aye. And the motion passes. We have two presentations this evening. The first is a presentation of a proclamation to Ashley Ingalls Ross by Mayor Finley. Thank you. But she led the charge. Okay. So I'm thrilled to be able to give this proclamation for Women-Owned Business Day. And I'll read just a couple of things. Women own nearly 13 million firms in the United States, employing more than 9.4 million workers and generating more than $1.9 trillion in sales. Alabama ranks 15th in the nation of women-owned businesses with a growth rate of 42%. Uh, it has an estimated 153,000 women-owned firms employing just over 111,000 people. And the city of Madison had 1,399 women-owned firms. March is recognized as Women in History Month and um, Women in Business Month also. So the city of Madison values entrepreneurship businesses and seeks to celebrate growth in businesses, ownership among women in the community. So I, as mayor of the city of Madison, do hereby proclaim the day of March 30th, 2024, as Women-Owned Business Day in the city of Madison. And I'm thrilled to give this to you. Thank you. You Thank betcha. You. And I'll let you say just a couple minutes. I'll just introduce. Okay, so, yeah. I'm Ashley Ingalls Ross. I represent the Huntsville Madison County Chamber of Commerce, and this is our Women's Business Council. And so I'll allow our chair this year, Vicki Morris, to say a few words. This is an exceptional honor to be here to have this proclamation for uh, uh, Women-Owned Business Day. And being a woman-owned business owner in the city of Madison is a great honor. I have been able to raise my family, start my business, run my business, and produce two productive adult members into society right here in our wonderful town of Madison. In our school system, I am the biggest cheerleader for our school system and the quality of life we have here in Madison. So this is truly an honor. Um, I consider Paul a friend of mine and lots of members on the council and our fe uh, fellow female business owners here. So this is truly an honor. We're all very excited to be here and celebrate woman-owned businesses because we know the backbone of any economy is the small business world and we represent small business here in the wonderful city of Madison, Alabama. Thank you. <laughs> And Garrett, you get to follow that. Mm -hmm. And our next presentation is from Ball Course and Garrett Foreman. Always good to see you each year. <laughs> okay. He says, it's always good to see you this time each year. Yeah, yeah. Try to bring money. <laughs> All right. Um, 
Mayor, City Council, thank you for the opportunity uh, to give this season in review presentation again this year. Um, sure, hit these buttons right. All right. Our mission statement uh, for the Trash Pandas is unite our communities by creating positive and lasting memories one experience at a time. Uh, we make our decisions based on our core values, which are integrity, passion, innovation, teamwork, and accountability. Uh, we know we're more than just a ballpark. Uh, we are truly a center piece for the, for the community. Uh, this year we've added quite a few uh, free events uh, at the ballpark. Uh, we have yoga in the outfield, which you can see there in the picture on the left. Uh, it's amazing how many people came out and, uh, for, for those events. Uh, free movie nights. We didn't charge for movies this year. Uh, we had a, a movie series over the course of the summer. And uh, we had free business mixers. So every quarter we have, we invite all the local businesses out. It's a free uh, meet, meet and greet uh, connection event, uh, whether we have it up in the Sports Med Stadium Club or on the, uh, in the Bill Penny Plaza, uh, depending on weather. And also this year we didn't charge for uh, uh, kids for trunk or treat event. Um, so we got a lot more, a lot more people out for, uh, you know, getting all that candy and stuff like that with our, with our, with our partners. Uh, Non-baseball events this year, uh, we had over 150 days worth of events, including the, the fair, the Christmas light show, the winter wonderland, um, including 14 high school baseball games, uh, a lot of local teams, but also James Clemens had a tournament this uh, in 2022 that brought in a lot of teams from out of the area, out of state, that came uh, to came and play at, the, at Toyota Field. Uh, SEC baseball games, we had uh, both Alabama and Auburn play this year. Um, it's funny we're talking about this now, but we just had Auburn play this year already. Um, and we have Alabama playing tomorrow now that the weather is hopefully cleared out and we're ready to go there. So, All right, we had a Smoke and Outfield uh, event. It was a barbecue festival. Um, we got word that the whistle stop wasn't coming to town this year, so we decided to um, try our – our, um, uh, to fill the void, I guess, without the whistle stop. And we had over 50 cook teams uh, come in from all over the region. Uh, it was a certified event, and it was a, it was, it was a great, great, really event, uh, good event. It was a lot of work, but uh, it, was, it was well worth it, as you can see all that uh, uh, good food that they, that they produced. Uh, Toyota Motor Manufacturing of Alabama, our sponsor for Toyota Field, had their Toyota family picnic outing. Uh, reserved the whole ballpark and came in, and we had fun celebrating all their successes in the in the area. And it was just um, you know they've been such great partners of ours over the years, and we're looking forward to continuing that uh, for years to come. Uh, we had the Celebrate Madison event. Uh, lots of folks attended to hear the mayor give us updates on all the great things that are happening in the city. Uh, we didn't keep a head count, but I think there was definitely a, a few thousand there that day um, enjoying, uh, enjoying the, the day out at the, at the ballpark. Uh, fall concert series, uh, we kind of rolled the dice and had six concerts in, uh, in two weekends in October. Uh, you know, the, the, we just we didn't have them on the field. We had them just on the concourse, so they were smaller events. We had uh, some um, uh, some bands like Warrant, which is my personal favorite, uh, John Anderson, uh, Saving Abel, Drake Milligan, and some uh, some bands that uh, played Queen and, and Michael Jackson music. So it was a it was a lot of fun. Great concerts. Uh, we had to dodge a few raindrops here and there in the cold weather, but uh, it was a, it was it was fun to put that on for the community. All right, the Rocket City Trash Pandas Foundation. Uh, we founded this in uh, 2022. It's a 501c3 organization that we were able to uh, get a lot of our players, uh, staff, uh, Sprocket, out into the community. Um, we adopted a highway there. You can see us picking up trash on the on the highway. Um, but we, we did a lot of food bank uh, stuff and got out into the schools and really trying to get grow that and get, get back in the community uh, as much as we can. Uh, looking forward to uh, growing this number. In just our second year, we were able to uh, donate over $50,000 in support of North Alabama nonprofits and uh, really want to take, uh, take that and, and, and jump that, that number. All right, Trash Panda Baseball. Uh, we, unfortunately, we weren't as good on the field this year as we were in 2022. Uh, 2022, we had the uh, best home record in all of baseball, and uh, uh, we did not do that this year, but uh, so we didn't have any playoffs this year, which kind of hurt our overall attendance. But uh, the kids played hard all season. 
Um, you can see, uh, I'm not even sure who that is there wearing the, the uh, helmet there, but NASA made that for us. So every time the guys hit a home run, they come off the field and put that, that uh, helmet off for just a little uh, extra celebration. Um, let's see. We led the Southern League in attendance again this year, number four uh, overall in AA in, in paid attendance. Uh, we had 12 former trash panda players make the Major League debut, which is, that's what we're here for, is for guys to go up. Uh, and, and make their dreams come true by becoming Major League Baseball players. I think we're at a total of like 28 um, after three seasons, which is a huge number. Uh, we had pitchers uh, Coleman Crow, Ben Joyce, and Eric Torres combined for the second no-hitter in Trash Panda history. I don't know if you remember that game, but uh, believe it or not, we lost that game 7-4 to four, uh, after throwing a no-hitter. So. Uh, things happen, but we got a lot of publicity for it. <laughs> uh, made all the national headlines for that, like how does that even happen? But I witnessed it and it did happen. <laughs> um, we had five of our top uh, 10 Angels prospect play in Madison this year. Um, I was uh, fortunate enough to be uh, the Southern League uh, nominee for minor league executive of the year. I'm not saying that to brag, but I think it's saying that to uh, saying that the, our industry is noticing what we're doing uh, here in Madison, and, uh, and that, just that nomination um, was uh, was an honor to to have that be you know, spoken about in in Las Vegas at the meetings. And you know, people know about the trash pandas across this industry. And our clubhouse manager, home clubhouse manager uh, Bubba Hearn, was named clubhouse manager of the year as well. So that was a big big accolade for him. All right, as you may have known, we moved out of our Hugh Street, or not Hugh Street, uh, Bridge Street location uh, for our retail. And we, I guess it's what, about a thousand feet over here, is uh, where we opened up a new trash panda store. And I had that groundbreaking or ribbon cutting, I guess it was maybe in July or August of this year. So it's been a, it's a, big, been a big hit and uh, brings in some extra uh, revenue for the city. Um, keeping with retail we uh started this trash panda travels uh campaign um i don't know if you recognize any of those photos in there i don't because none of them are in madison alabama so what we've done is we've uh, asked our fans that buy trash panda merchandise to take pictures of where they are across the world uh, across the united states and send them to our uh, trash panda travels uh, website and, you know, obviously when I go out of town, I, that's all I own is trash panda stuff, maybe a few angels uh, um, sweatshirts. But uh, for the most part, all I own is trash panda stuff. And people are always asking, you know, what's the trash pandas? Or they recognize their logo and say, hey, I know them. Where, where is, where are the trash pandas from? And uh, if you imagine all of these places that people go, people are saying we're in Madison, Alabama. So we're kind of spreading, uh, spreading the word about our, our great city here. So. Um, with all that, that being said, um, we had a great year. We're having a blast um, doing what we do over at uh, Toyota Field, and we definitely can't wait for 2024. And uh, bulk or payment to the city for this year is uh, was one just under uh, 1.5 1 1 million. So you can tell I made this slide. That was that was <laughs> I have the fancy uh, letters here. So. Uh, and we will pay, uh, we'll write a check for the city to, to, to gap that balance of what hasn't been paid. And then that total is $596,944.23. So we'll get that checked over uh, to you guys uh, this week. The guy with the backpacker in the red shirt, he's the one that gets it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I, rec I recognize him. I know you do. Okay. He's at every game, I think. <laughs> All right, so I look ahead. Um, you know, we're always trying to enhance uh, the fan experience at, at Toyota Field. We are, um, we're adding a whole bunch of uh, inflatables. That's a mock-up uh, down on the bottom picture there. So we're gonna add a bounce house. And this is all out in the Toyota outfield experience, kind of in center field. So we'll be putting uh, bounce houses and, and uh, obstacle courses. And we gotta test a couple of them out the other day. Um, I think it's a, a ski ball and, a, and a, like a bat swing. Uh, we're also adding a 150 square foot LED display right inside the Bill Penny 
uh, Toyota Plaza as you come in where our lineup boards used to be. Um, they used to be just static boards. We're going to put a little video board there. So at the beginning of the game, we'll have leaderboards, uh, you know, standings and stuff like that. But as you know, no one really looks at that board once the first or second inning comes around. So we're going to um, then switch that because there's a video board and show upcoming events. Hey, we have a game tomorrow. Come back. We have the beer and wine festival coming up. Whatever that is, that we can uh, um, say, hey, come back and see us as as most of our fans leave out through that Pepsi gate. And then uh, you can see the wall mural there. So it's going to be a photo op. Um, we have a local artist uh, um, paint that on the wall. So it's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool mural that was just uh, finished last week. And then food and beverage wise, we're adding a sweet space. It's a, it's a frozen yogurt uh, stand that's gonna have all the, all the toppings that you can think of, um, but that'll be a, a big hit. And then uh, we have a local beer garden behind Home Plate where we're gonna have local brews um, from Inner Space, Yellow Hammer, Straight to Ale, to name a few. Um, so we'll have, you know, support the local community there. And then also we have valid fill dispensers uh, that'll help with our, our uh, speeding up some lines. It's gonna be a refillable cup, reusable cup that you can bring back uh, game after game, but it'll be an option for our fans to um, you know, purchase on the cup and it's, it's pretty cool technology. So all the engineers in town will uh, get a kick out of that. So. All right, that's, uh, that's my presentation. So thank you for your time. Any, any questions? Thank you for moving Thank across you. the street. Yeah. Yeah. That was huge. All right. Appreciate you guys. I know you work awful hard. It's a lot of nights, a lot of days, and I appreciate all the time that you guys put in to do that. Yeah. We're putting the tarp on in the wind here in a little bit, so that, make yeah. sure we can play tomorrow for Alabama games. So. A lot of people hoping that it gets played. Yes. Roll Thank time. you, Garrett. Uh, next, we have public comments. Speakers are limited to three minutes each. Please come forward and state your name and the district in which you live. We do not have any comment cards filled out, so anyone who'd like to come forward, please come forward. Hi, my name's Joanne Holman, and I'm a licensed professional counselor. I'm actually not in the district here in Madison, but I'm here in support um, of the EAP program that uh, this department's trying to implement. Um, I actually did do a short stint with the police department. I did live in Madison for about 14 years and I moved over to Huntsville, not to be a trader or anything. Um, but my clientele are all over North Alabama. So I am a huge supporter of this EAP program. Um, I've been an EAP provider for 10 years and um, an on-site EAP provider, which this program is um, twice. Um, my last position was for GE Aviation and it was a huge hit. Um, it's really hard to get people to do these type of positions. And so once they are filled, it's, it, it's just a huge um, bonus to um, the organization. And um, I don't know numbers because numbers vary as far as that goes, um, saving money um, per person per hour um, regarding absenteeism, presenteeism. Um, that was a huge more morale boost. Um, it's not just the individual counseling that these EAP positions um, provide, but also you have lunch and learns and also support for supervisors, managers, and um, things of that nature. So, I mean, it just, I could go on and on, but I won't do that. I'm trying to just be as um, minimal as I can here. Um, but I can say this, that a lot of the employees at GE would probably never have seen a mental health provider had they not had an on-site EAP provider. So some people were in their 50s and had never been to a mental health provider, so that was really huge. And um, and word spreads, and once they find that they have someone that's, that's a, a good person to go to, they spread that word, and they're like, yeah, this really helped. And so anyway, I'm a huge champion, as you can see, for it. Um, I just wanted to put that plug in, and um, I hope it passes. So thank you for your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Is there anyone else who would like to address the council? Jennifer Coe, Ashley State, District 5, Council President. Okay, today i um, here to talk to you about human resources, resolution authorizing an EAP, which this lady was just discussing. So it looks like it's an employee assistance agreement with behavioral health systems. 
So this one, I guess, is just, um, will just be covering mental health. Okay, it looks like a form of occupational medicine or military health, I'm not sure. It's a third party administrator, so who submits the claim? Does the liaison also provide the mental health benefits for which they may submit a claim to behavioral health systems? over and above the published 38,000 a year salary that is in the contract. Um, what is the rule require an employee who retires? How long do they have to wait before they're allowed to con uh, contract with their former employer? Because um, it looks like it could be a conflict of interest. Um, it is, a, is it in the best interest of the employees with this situation? I don't know because this looks like it's just for the police and the paramedics or just for everyone. It looks like it's for the police. I don't know. So um, is it in the best interest of the employees? Because this falls under human resources, so it's ostensibly a benefit. It says they are drug testing. And also, um, it says that I've got out of order here. They're doing drug tests. They're going to do group therapy. Um, they're, some of the things that it will encompass... Um, it doesn't look like it would be appropriate. So the employees will be receiving mental health wellness benefits from their ex-boss who will be, according to this contract, be able to provide certain confidential information to her boss, the same as the old boss. It, see, it says group therapy. It's probably inappropriate. Um, and responder wellness checks and how does that work. And also, under legal, the resolution authorizing an amendment to the agreement with Huntsville Utilities for streetlight maintenance. So if Huntsville Utilities has the qualifications listed on the contract, experience, expertise, proven track record, knowledge of, and compliance with all the applicable federal and state laws and regulations, can the citizens of Madison expect to see an improvement in the lighting, we're going to have more adequate lighting now, and for public safety. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Coe. Anyone else? Margie Daly, District 6. If everyone is thinking the same, then no one is actually thinking. Uh, I'd like to mention about the mental health because the way I read it, somebody is retiring, they're going to get a salary of $38,000 to um, have a, a, a subcontractor for mental health of the city employees. Now, I see this as, well, first of all, we have to pay more money for this, so it's like a dollar ninety something per employee per month. So it, not only they already have health insurance, but this makes it double dipping duplicitous and the confidentiality of mental health records is now data mined at the local government. I, I don't agree with any of this. Um, then I'd like to mention that I have found out we have 354 full-time employees now. They seem to be, every time I come up to City Hall, they seem to be stepping over one another. We have one out in the parking lot. I guess our job is monitoring the parking lot because I'm not allowed to ride my bike through the City Hall parking lot and stop for a drink of water now without somebody accosting me again. Um, do these employees realize that it's tax dollars that pays them and that you guys are not their bosses, you guys are temporary? Then again, I want to mention that the city clerk is the only person in charge of public records. It's supposed to be an independent office with public records. I call there and they tell me, oh, we got to run it through Brian Kilgore. Well, that's not the way it, it, the city is supposed to be run. Then I see we got $124,000 on that insurance claim that was decades old, and it was said at the public, here, the public meeting that that damage was decades old, but that's not what was signed on the insurance claim. Uh, then again, about the uh, half a building, we're putting in a meter, and yet we're taking responsibility for Intergraph of Delaware's electric. That's what it says in, in the thing. Then I want to get into the nonprofits. Now, I'm glad Trash Pandas is very happy, but why can't they pay for some of these improvements? Why does this all have to be on the taxpayers' backs? This is how to avoid taxes and showing profits. A nonprofit, tax dollar Ponzi scheme. 
hang a shingle, create shareholders, get a government contract, create a nonprofit, give the dollars made from the government contracts, fund the nonprofit with donations that are tax exempted, keep 9.6%, not administrative fees, it goes right in their pocket, then we open a trust so that it is, uh, you know, I don't know, but they ought to be paying for the improvements instead of us, the taxpayers. Then there's the shanty shacks. I see that it looks like it's going to be a gated community, and we were told this was going to be able to. Thank you, Ms. Stanley. Is there anyone else who would like to address the council? Please come forward. Seeing none, we will close public comments and move to the Consent Agenda and Finance Committee report. Yes. One second. Let me get back to my page. I'm sorry. Um, the Finance Committee met on um, this morning. <laughs> Actually, it was this morning. Day. It's been a long day. And um, we reviewed the regular and periodic bills. Also, we had previously reviewed them because we received them by email. Um, and so in, on the consent agenda, we have a donation of chairs and Iraqis at the Wellness Center um, uh, valued at $4,900 from an anonymous donor and a um, donation of $30 to the Senior Center by L. Tucker. Um, I make a motion to approve this consent agenda. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Ready for a vote. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council President Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Shaw? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Council Member Seifert? Aye. Motion passes. Presentation of reports beginning with Mayor Finley. Uh, no business tonight. District 1. No business tonight. District 2. Okay, on um, April the 22nd, we plan to vote on the budget. So if y'all have any questions, um, I, a paper copy was put in everybody's boxes. Just let me know if you have any questions. Also tonight, after the meeting, anybody who is available, if they could help stack the chairs over in that area, we're going to have people voting here at 7 o'clock in the morning. So your help would be appreciated. That's all. And that's the mid-year budget, right? Yes, it is the mid-year budget. budget. I'm sorry. Okay. District 3? No new business. District 4? No new business. District 6? Yeah, I'd like to remind everybody that the uh, Madison Police and Citizen Advisory Committee is meeting tomorrow night. Uh, they are at the St. Matthew's Episcopal Church this time. It's John on Hughes. Uh, there'll be signs out there for anybody that needs to see them. Uh, the topic being discussed is mental health. They will have a speaker from Getting Real About Mental Illness will be offering insights. So I hope anybody that is interested can attend. This looks like a really good meeting. Uh, the Madison Visionary Partners are having their, they're hosting their second annual Community Volunteer Awards Breakfast on this Thursday, March 28th at 8 a.m. It'll be over at Toyota Field. There it's just two to congratulate and to honor all of the volunteers that work in our community. Um, so I hope you're able to attend. I believe tickets are still available. Uh, also, the Beautification Board is doing their spring-wide cleanup for the first time. Uh, it will start in April. Terry Odom has been in charge of it. The first cleanup event will be on Saturday, April 13th from 9 a.m. to 11. We will clean up between on Landers Drive from Browns Ferry to Mill Road. So if there's anybody that has time on that Saturday afternoon, please, there's going to be a genie sign up and all this information. There's going to be other events going on too, but so far this is the only one that has um, been totally finalized. But there'll be more information on our social media. So um, I hope everyone will, will get involved and help to clean up our city in this way. Um, I'd also like to thank the police department for their added presence on Crestview and Atwood Drive now that they've opened the Dublin back gate. Um, there's been many concerned citizens, and I appreciate the extra presence there. And finally, I wish to thank the fire and rescue department. They hosted me for a full day on March 13th, and it was a full day. Started at 8.30, finished at 4.30 in the afternoon, and it was amazing. They, they were so hospitable, but... 
I got to visit all four of the stations. I was able to see a demonstration done on cutting holes in, this, in the roofs in order to let out the smoke so that gives time for those that are trapped to, um, to be rescued. It's, it's amazing what all they are constantly training and working on over there. Um, I also learned about the in-house paramedic training that we provide. It's amazing how many of our, of our firemen are also trained in paramedics, so there's somebody there on site to help when it's an accident or a fire. And this is an amazing thing that we provide for our city. And I'm, I'd like to thank Chief for all, for all that you showed me that day, for how wonderful all the employees are, very respectful, um, and they are here to serve us. And they work so hard, and they sacrifice so, more, so much. So I just wish to give a shout-out to each and every one of them for a lovely day. And they have invited anyone in city council who would like to go also spend the day with them. Um, you learn a lot, and it's a good way to support the people that protect us. And that's all I have. Thank you. District 7. No, no business. I have a couple of reminders. We are going to be conducting Board of Education interviews this Wednesday here in Council Chambers beginning at 530. That will be uh, our official work session for the month, but we have added a work session next Tuesday, April 2nd at 5 p.m., at which time we will hear um, news about uh, Major League Baseball requirements and improvements to Toyota Field, um, and that's the only item that's on that agenda for next Tuesday at 5 p.m. We do not have any uh, board or committee appointments or public hearings tonight, so we will... Is that, a, is that a work session or special call meeting? Oh, sorry. It's a work session and special call meeting, so okay. we'll stream that just because we'll go straight into the meeting from there. Okay? All right. Thanks for reminding me. Uh, engineering. Um, all right, first uh, first uh, tonight I have uh, resolution number 2024-006-R. This is authorizing a memorandum of an understanding with the city of Huntsville and Madison County for joint funding of the slaughter road improvements uh, to divide the construction costs of that three ways. Uh, the funding for that to come out of the engineering department. Move to approve. Second. Motion in a second. Very excited about this project. Could you detail a little bit about what's going to happen on slaughter road? Uh, yes, so there are going to be two sites. Uh, the first site, uh, site number one, will be at the intersection of Eastview and Slaughter Road. They're going to be adding, uh, they're going to be extending the northbound left turn lane onto Slaughter Road. They're going to be bringing that back a couple hundred feet to add some more stack length there. Uh, and they'll also be adding a southbound right turn lane onto, onto Eastview Drive uh, coming from the north, north direction. Uh, that's at site one. Site two is near Roy Drive and Castle Drive further north. Um, they're going to be adding a southbound right turn lane onto Roy Drive. Um, they're also going to be adding some center turn lanes, uh, including a left lane southbound onto Castle. So it's a pretty good widening project, mostly adding some turn lanes in those two locations. I'd like to thank Commissioner Haraway and uh, City Council Member Meredith in Huntsville for working with us on this project. Any other questions? Ready for a vote? Or do we have a motion second? Greg. Greg. Greg and Pitty. Okay. Mm -hmm. Council Member Shaw. Aye. Council Member Powell. Aye. Council President Bartlett. Aye. Council Member Robleski. Aye. Council Member Spears. Aye. Council Member Denzine. Aye. Council Member Seifert. Aye. Motion passes. Next. Okay, next I have resolution number 2024-079-R. Uh, this is authorizing uh, amendment number one with Kimley Horn Associates on project 22038. This is uh, Burgreen and Hardeman intersection. Uh, it's going to be a new signal uh, to be added there to support the school to be constructed. Uh, this is to prepare two legal descriptions and deeds uh, for requ uh, required right-of-way acquisition, uh, not to exceed $2,500. That's your proof. Second. Question and second. Any questions? Ready for a vote? Council Member Spe oh, I'm sorry. Council Member Shaw. Aye. Council Member Spears. Aye. Council President Bartlett. Aye. Council Member Robleski. Aye. Council Member Powell. Aye. Council Member Denzine. Aye. Council Member Seifert. Aye. Motion passes. Okay, and finally, I have resolution number 2024098R. This is uh, authorization to procure track number eight for Seegers Road and Maysville Drive uh, improvement project, uh, also to support the new school um, to be constructed. Uh, this is uh, 
acquiring that right of way in the amount of four thousand twenty dollars and fifty one cents. Move to approve. Second. Motion by Powell. Second by Shaw. Any questions? Ready for them. Council Member Powell. Aye. Council Member Shaw. Aye. Council President Bartlett. Aye. Council Member Robleski. Aye. Council Member Spears. Aye. Council Member Denzine. Aye. Council Member Seaford. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, Michael. Aye. Human Resources. Good evening, Council. I have two items for your consideration this evening. And because these two items in coordination make a new program for the city, I'd like to take a moment to explain them together and then request individual motions for discussion and a vote. Thank you. So as we've heard a little bit about tonight, uh, we would like to upgrade the city's employee assistance program, which is also called an EAP program. And the purpose of our program is to provide a broader range of support for all city employees, but also some specialized support for police officers and firefighters, given the stresses that they face in the field every day. And we've learned through research that this, this type of program has become much more common in the private sector and in the public sector. And there are large police uh, departments throughout our country, including our neighbors to the north, Nashville and Memphis, that have a full complement of employee assistance plan staff just for one department. So tonight we're asking for a bit of a pilot program to get some more resources to our employees. And we're asking for an in-house component and, as well as an external component. So the first part of this plan is to authorize an agreement with behavioral health systems to provide an employee assistance program to all city employees. If approved, behavioral health systems will provide 10 sessions to each employee and their dependents for counseling and even legal, financial, and elder care guidance. They provide other medical evaluations and assessments for city management when that's needed and professional case management support. They also provide employee and management education and training. And if approved, this will cost about $10,000 a year for three years based on current estimates. And I'd like to note that the city of Huntsville, city of Birmingham, and Madison County all have retained behavioral health systems as their EAP provider and have heard very good things about behavioral health systems from Huntsville's HR director. In addition, we'd like to provide in-house support for our police officers and firefighters, as well as our dispatchers, by authorizing an agreement with Detective Stacy Thomas, who is retiring soon, to be an in-house wellness coordinator. And the scope of work that we're proposing is that she would provide first responder wellness checks, counseling support, and therapy referrals, lunch and learn sessions, group therapy for first responders, and critical incident response and support. Uh, we've received support both from the police chief and the fire chief for this program. And like I said earlier, this is becoming a much more commonplace feature of a modern police department and fire department. If approved, this will cost $38,000 a year for one year, and we'll track the expenditures and activity over time to know if we can bring this forward for an extension next year. I'd like to note um, a few facts about Detective Thomas's background and then address the question that came up earlier about the retirement systems of Alabama and ethics concerns that one of our citizens raised. So I, I figure all of you have had a chance to meet and work with Detective Thomas in your time in the city. She came to us from the Memphis Police Department where she was a critical incident team member and received a good bit of training from Memphis. Then she came to Madison 17 years ago and has been an excellent police officer and she spearheaded the community mental health officer program where she has provided so, like support in the field for many cr critical incidents that have happened involving our citizens over the past several years. While she was here, she also obtained her master's degree and she's the city's tuition assistance program to do that. And she'd like to stay around to help her colleagues in the police department and fire department with their wellness needs. I'd like to note that we ran this agreement by both the Retirement Systems of Alabama and the Ethics Commission, and we received pre-approval from both. How this works is that Detective Thomas will submit her retirement paperwork 
she'll have one month until she officially retires from policing. Then she'll have to take a one month break and she can come back to service in June. So if approved, uh, if both of these items are approved tonight, we would like to start this program the first week of June. And I'll be working with my staff to make sure that we've got everything ready for implementing the program at that time and get all the information to employees that they need. Move to approve resolution 2024-091-R. Second. Second. A motion um, by Spears, second by Denzine. Yep. Robleski. Oh, was it Robleski? It was I'm sorry, mm-hmm. Robleski and Denzine. Any comments, questions? Thank you. This Thank is you. just going to be huge. Thank you so much for providing this for our, for our safety people. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you for your support. Ready for a vote. Hey, let me, I got a quick comment about okay. that. So I, I do want to um, speak about this a little bit, you know, as as I've done other things and seen other other um, events in our state, this is something that's talked about a lot. Uh, mental health is always a, a big issue, particularly amongst departments of police, fire, um, all over the place. And I think this is something huge that we're doing for the city and our city employees. Um, I, I would ask at some point if we could revisit it for even our retirees because you know, when they when they leave the job, they take some of those things home with them. Mm-hmm. Um, that it doesn't end at their employment. So, um, you know, when you do some of the things that the fire department does or police does, um, it's it's stuff that I can't imagine mm-hmm. and stuff that I wouldn't want to do. So, I would like to see us grow this if we can. Um, you know, I just think it's an important thing we're doing. I'm I'm really excited about it and hope hope it passes. That's a great point, Teddy, about retirees. Yeah, that really is. I totally support that, too. Does, does this program also, I mean, just understanding from the police families and first responder families, um, if they're covered under the insurance, does it also cover them for yes. mental health as well? Yes. Okay. But not, not everybody takes their medical insurance into retirement with them, so. No, I agree. I'm just saying at as part of that, I mean, I, you know, I, I still deal with issues myself from 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 my grandfather, so I get it. Of you know what, say I get it. I've never been in that position, so I don't even want to say I understand what police officers and and you know first responders, firefighters, what y'all go through. But um, at the end of the day, I do know what it means to you know hug or kiss your loved one goodbye in the morning. You don't know they're coming back in the evening, so. Okay, ready for a vote. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Council President Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council Member Shaw? Aye. Council Member Seaford? Aye. Motion passes. And next, resolution number 2024-092-R. Move to approve. Second. Second. (laughs) Okay, uh, same motion, second. Robleski, Denzine. (laughs) And I'd just like to recognize Detective Thomas. She uh, was one of our first pieces of legislation in 2016 when we designated her our emergency response person. And so whenever there was a domestic violence issue, whether uh, a hostage type situation, she was the first to go there. She has been so successful at this that she has trained other departments. And I am so thankful that you are staying with us because you are a hot commodity. And I just wanted to take this moment right now and thank you so much for all you have done behind the scenes and not always received that recognition. You've saved lives, and I'm very grateful for you. Any other comments, questions? I'll just add, when it comes to, you know, so many other things we do, we, we manage risk and reward. And I know, you know, one of the things, Megan, when she was legal, now she's HR, we always talked about that. And the risk that these guys and gals do versus the reward that this helps our folks with. You know, it, it minimizes what could happen and gives them a chance to work through a lot of things. It's a tough world out there. There's a lot of folks roaming around City Hall, roaming around the city, doing different things that they deal with every day. Have the ability to talk through it, work with it, and then their families, that's a big deal. And I really appreciate you and your team working on both of these things for all the employees, but also um, especially our first responders. Thank you. Okay, ready for a vote. 
Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Council Member um, Council President Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council Member Shaw? Aye. Council Member Seifert? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, Megan. Thank, Thank you so, so much, much for Megan. supporting this program. Thank you. Legal. Come on, Teddy. My favorite person. Good evening. <laughs> I have one item. Uh, resolution number 2024-94-R. Uh, this is... Okay, just a second. If you're going to talk, please go outside. We're trying to focus on the business of the council. And you're being disruptive. Thank you. This resolution is authorizing an amendment to the agreement with Huntsville Utilities for street light maintenance. Uh, this is the same agreement. It's just being renewed. Uh, we were just asked to change the schedule of the uh, uh, salaries that were being paid because uh, Huntsville Utilities just gave a 3% COLA to their employees, and they wanted that reflected in the new, um, the new uh, schedule of payments. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Motion by Shaw. Second by Powell. Any discussion or questions? Ready for a vote. Council Member Shaw? Aye. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council President Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Council Member Seifert? Aye. And the motion passes. And do we have any miscellaneous announcements? I, I do. I, one thing I forgot to mention, and I don't, I don't think council is even aware, we um, we had a situation um, over the course of the last couple of weeks where we realized that from a billing standpoint, um, we needed to make some adjustments. And it was in, in the city of Athens, and um, is the one who manages that. And I was able to call the mayor and say, hey, we're going to be sending this. Will you look at it and help us? Uh, if, you know, work through this. And within four days, he didn't, he didn't ask a question. He just sent us a check. And I just thought it was, you know, from a teammate standpoint for helping us, um, it was really, to me, valuable that, that they do the billing for us, but that he also understood, hey, we, we will miss this, and we're going to get it right going forward. But I just wanted to comment how, how well and how much I appreciate them just doing it. So. Mm -hmm. Good partner. I forgot to mention, and I appreciate them. Good partner. All right. Motion to adjourn. We are adjourned. Obviously, we have all the social media platforms that are there that in turn continue to push this information out for you guys.